Greetings. Today is Friday, August 30, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. As of the time of recording this video, it is 5 p.m. local time in the Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring a disturbance located between the Caribbean and Africa. It has a medium probability of development as it moves westward and will eventually reach Caribbean waters, where it is anticipated to form into a tropical cyclone. There is a high risk that it could become a dangerous hurricane in the long term. So it is important for residents along the Gulf of Mexico, including the southern states of the United States, the region of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula, parts of Central America, and some of the greater Antilles to closely monitor the evolution of this disturbance. On the other hand, the National Hurricane Center is also monitoring a trough located near the coast of Texas and Louisiana, where there is a low probability of development over the next 48 hours. Additionally, we have a new tropical wave located south of the Cape Verde Islands, which has a low probability of development over the next seven days as it moves through the tropical Atlantic. After several weeks of inactivity, which is quite unusual for the month of August, the Atlantic is finally showing signs of cyclonic activity. It is likely that we will enter an active period in the coming weeks as we approach the peak of the season which is on September 10th. In the latest bulletin at 2 p.m., the National Hurricane Center maintained a 40% chance of development for the disturbance we are monitoring in the Atlantic, which could be a significant threat to parts of the Western Caribbean. Also, they have marked the area east of Texas and continue to maintain a 20% chance of development for the new tropical wave. However, in this video, I would like to give special attention to the tropical wave that will reach the Caribbean, which represents the greatest long-term threat. But briefly, I wanted to talk about the disturbance located in the Gulf of Mexico. You can? See in the visible satellite image how this area of bad weather has some rotation in the mid-levels of the atmosphere and is bringing heavy showers to some parts of eastern Texas and southern Louisiana. There is a possibility that a low-pressure area may develop and potentially become a tropical depression for a short period before it moves over Louisiana or Texas. And although this disturbance should not cause major inconveniences, rainfall accumulations between 2 to 6 inches are expected along the coast of Louisiana and areas between Galveston and Louisiana, where the maximum rainfall and poor weather conditions are expected, along with some local flooding throughout the weekend. Now, let's move to the tropical Atlantic area, where we have a disturbance associated with the intertropical convergence zone. This is the system we anticipate will develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm when it reaches Caribbean waters. And while it will impact the Lesser Antilles with some heavy rain and wind gusts, our main concern is what will happen if this system manages to develop and reach the Caribbean as a tropical cyclone, especially when global models are showing us the possibility that at some point, a tropical depression or tropical storm will develop in Caribbean waters with a west-northwest trajectory. Unfortunately, across this area, sea surface temperatures are at record levels for this time of year. We can see this in the following graph, where the blue color represents the temperatures in the Caribbean Sea region, and you can see that they are at historically unprecedented levels for this date. Therefore, there is too much energy available in this area for this disturbance to strengthen if it manages to become a tropical cyclone. Furthermore, in the long term, if it moves towards the Gulf of Mexico region, notice that the waters in this area are also at record levels for this time of year. So, I repeat, we have a great concern if this disturbance manages to become a tropical cyclone and could pose a threat to any area between Cuba, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Honduras, Jamaica, Haiti, or the Dominican Republic. For now, it is anticipated that when it crosses the Lesser Antilles, it will be a strong tropical wave or tropical depression. For now, it is projected to pass south of Puerto Rico. So, to analyze the medium and long-term projections a bit, let's look at the runs of the global models. Let's start with the American model. Notice that it has a strong tropical wave reaching the Lesser Antilles during the midday hours on Monday, and eventually, it keeps this disturbance on a westward trajectory. It is not until about 7 to 8 days later that it develops into a tropical storm south of Cuba, then maintains a trajectory over the Gulf of Mexico where it shows the risk of significant strengthening. It is worth mentioning that the GFS model keeps this disturbance relatively weak, but if this tropical wave manages to develop earlier than the American model shows, it could pose a greater risk to areas of the Western Caribbean. That is precisely what the European model shows, where, unlike the GFS model, it does develop a tropical depression before reaching the Lesser Antilles. This would be for the morning hours on Monday. Notice that it maintains a trajectory south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. By Wednesday morning, it has a tropical storm moving south of Haiti and Jamaica, and by the end of next week, it is undergoing rapid strengthening across the northwest Caribbean waters and the southern Gulf of Mexico region. In fact, in this run, the European model has a Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane passing near the Yucatan Peninsula or western Cuba. 
On the other hand, other models, like the Canadian model have a Category 2 hurricane moving over Western Caribbean waters very close to the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize in about 7 to 8 days. We also have the German model, which has a Category 2 or 3 hurricane passing very close to the south of Haiti by the end of next week. I think it is quite evident that there is a high risk that if this disturbance manages to develop into a tropical cyclone over the next 5 days, there is a high risk of rapid strengthening in the long term, potentially into a dangerous hurricane by next weekend. We can clearly see these scenarios in the ensemble members of the European model. In general, all of them keep this system as a strong tropical wave or tropical depression when it reaches the Lesser Antilles, and maintain a westward trajectory passing south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic by early next week. But in about 5 to 8 days, notice that there is great uncertainty in its future trajectory, and also a high risk that we may have a dangerous hurricane in the Western Caribbean. In fact, in these scenarios, the pink colors represent major hurricanes. This is why it is important for Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Honduras, and the Gulf states of Mexico to closely monitor the evolution of this disturbance over the coming days, especially for next week. And although for the moment, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic do not seem to be at risk of a direct impact, we will continue to be vigilant in case anything changes in the forecast. For example, some members of the American model have a slightly more northerly trajectory that could bring this disturbance closer to the region if it manages to organize more quickly than anticipated over this weekend. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor its evolution and keep you informed across the Caribbean, the United States, Mexico, and Central America. It's important to check if you are subscribed to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Well, with that, I bid you farewell, and I will see you in the next video, which I will be recording tomorrow. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend.